Yeah, all right. Hey, hey, we're back in New Jersey. We're back in Jersey. Wow. So, hey, my name is Jonathan Echeverria. This is You Mix Cocktails. We're again with our special guest, Warren. Thanks again for hey, coming back to the thank show. Thank you for coming to my home. Absolutely, yeah. So, we're back in Jersey, and we're, he's decided to do part two. So, he's agreed to part two of the interview. And really, we're going to do some cocktails. We're really going to talk about, you know, more Warren, really. So, Warren, last time... In, at New Orleans, really, we were talking about your books. Could you, you know, elaborate a little more about how you know? Yeah, you know, I've written five books in, in okay. a very short period of time, and it's it's kind of exciting for me because I came out of a completely different career. I wasn't working in, in food and beverage since well the uh, early '90s. I, you know, I'd always worked as a part timer in the business, but I never had a full time job in it. Sure. You know, since I lost my business back in the '80s. So basically what, I, what I've done is I've written five books. I wrote my first book, it's called Apothecary Cocktails, back in sure, 2013. Sure. Following quickly on its heels was Whiskey Cocktails. That I finished six months later. Then my next book was Bitters and Shrub Syrup Cocktails, followed closely by my fourth book, Cannabis Cocktails, which just came out June 1st. Nice. And I have a fifth book which comes out this fall called The Craft Cocktail Compendium, and it's 200 of my of recipes for my first three books. So it's bound together. It's going to be really nice to look at. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Wow, that's great. So tell us a little more about, you know, the, the cannabis, really. You were telling me about you that. Know, you just... know, the cannabis is a very interesting topic because living here in New Jersey, it's still a forbidden topic. So, Absolutely. you know, we were talking before about making some cannabis cocktails. And I just have to say, we're not going to be doing those today. But sure. we are going to do something that's a mocktail in the style of the cannabis cocktails. But really, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to heal, we're trying to give uh, good feeling and make it so it's something that dispels the, the impression that it's just a stoner drug. <laughs> absolutely. It's a lot more style, more, you know, pizzazz, really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's, but there's all different strains, and each strain offers a different feeling sure. or a different effect. And, you know, being that we're shooting this in the late afternoon, what I would probably say is we wanted something for... Uh, to relax us into the evening. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's uh, really, I, I mean, I could say he's a pioneer. Could I use that word? Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Yeah, essentially, he's a pioneer, really. And he's, again, we have Warren on the show because it's just a fantastic, you know, ideology, really. He's breaking that, that glass ceiling, I guess you could say, in terms of changing the cocktails. You know, we always talk about conventional ingredients, fresh fruits, all those you know, different spirits, you know, water and ice is the most important ingredient. Mm -hmm. But cannabis is something that, you know, again, you mentioned previously about your apothecary, how that ties up close yeah, to as well. Yeah, well, you know, apothecary cocktails was missing one important ingredient, but America wasn't ready for it yet. So when we took the mindset of the early apothecary, they may or may not have been using cannabis. But I believe that they were, and the reason why I believe that is I was down in New Orleans at the Pharmacy Museum when I got the inspiration to write this book. And I wanted to see what kind of ingredients they used in the early apothecary, so what better place to look than a museum of the apothecary or a museum of the, of the pharmacy. Absolutely. And the first one in America was in New Orleans, and it was Louis DeFillo who started the first pharmacy in America. And one of the ingredients that he did use, and we know he did use, was cannabis. And they used it in all different types of methods. They used it in tinctures, they used it in tonics, they used it in bitters, they used it in, you know, in shrubs, sure. so to speak, you know, vinegars acidulated beverages because you really kind of have to put yourself in the mindset of pre-electricity. How do they keep things fresh? Well, you kept right. things fresh with alcohol. There you go. Yeah. Makes sense. Sterilization. Ster uh, well, maybe not sterilization at this point, but they I don't know if they were aware of that yet, but they certainly were aware of preservation. Okay. Because food preservation, especially in a city like New Orleans, is paramount unless you would like to contract some sort of foodborne illness. People didn't live very long in the, you know, in the 17 and the 1800s. Right. The, even right up into the early uh, 19th century, they were in the 20th century. If they didn't refrigerate and the food or, or drink or, or whatever it was they were doing was at room temperature, they could die. Wow. That's, that's it's, it's pretty frightening. Yeah. So people would come to their pharmacist to heal what ailed them. And in this case, it would they'd be healing their gut. They would use... Pecho bitters, which were invented down in uh, New Orleans, actually, right. you know, by Amadou Pecho, who created a drink, uh, an elixir against against dysentery and stomach ail ailments. And then, of course, you had uh, Angostura, 
Angostura was originally invented against seasickness. And, okay. And it has a, a rich history as a stomach curative. I like nothing more when I have a hangover, not that I've ever had one. But when, I, when I've had a hangover, I would say about two tablespoons of Angostura bitters in a glass of seltzer water. How delicious is that? And it heals you better than any Alka-Seltzer. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot. Just people, two or three dashes of Angostura in their seltzer. You need a little more than that. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it is pretty high you know, volume. Sure. ABY, so it it really it's it you need you need about a teaspoon or a tablespoon even depending on how you're feeling. Yeah. And then of course I have my Angostura chicken uh, bitters chicken, which is one of the great dishes in my repertoire. Wow. Take about a four or five pound chicken, cut it up into eighths, put it in a stainless steel or glass bowl, and cover it with about twenty or thirty shakes of uh, Angostura bitters. Give it a good turn. Throw it in the refrigerator overnight. The next day, grill it over hardwood charcoal. It's like nothing else you've ever. That's had. incredible. That's in my apothecary cocktails book also. That's fantastic. And see, that's one of the main things about this channel. We always talk about the history and culture of mm -hmm. drinks, and this is great, especially the apothecary that you wrote about. Of course. That is just it's just great showing really you know what our forefathers did before you know. With yeah, well, you know, even with the popularity of Jerry Thomas coming forward today, and he was using shrubs and bitters and tonics and all sorts of interesting ingredients that we still hold true today. And one of the drinks that, you know, that I wanted to create today for, for you on your show was going to be a cocktail we call the Dank and Stormy. But unfortunately, <laughs> due to the, the advanced liquor and uh, cannabis laws here in the state of New Jersey, I can't do the infusion that I wanted to do for you. Sure, sure. But we can assume that, with that, well, you know, I have this little syrup here, and this is a, a ginger beer syrup. And one of the recipes in my book would be to in, uh, infuse the ginger beer syrup with THC, you wouldn't be able to see that it was in there. It wouldn't change the color any, maybe a little bit darker, but at the end of the day, it's just a syrup like anything else, and it adds to your cocktail, and it augments your cocktail, and it makes it more flavorful, and it gives a little kick also. All right. So, so would you like to show, me show you how I do this? So, this so, so you're going to imagine that this is a dank and stormy. So I'm going to take the, uh, the ginger syrup, and I'm going to add, you know, what is this? An ounce or something. So put yeah, that in. There's an there's ice in there. Or three quarters of an ounce. Yeah, yeah, three quarters of an ounce. There's ice in there, and this stuff is really really good. Absolutely. It's made by a local producer, and it's a spicy ginger syrup. Maybe you might taste a little bit of that. Sure. Yeah. Spicy. It has a real kick to it. Not delicious. Wow, and that that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You want to so, <laughs> and this is it. a uh, this is a rum from an independent bottler in Jamaica. And I'm going to put about an ounce and a half in here. Okay. So, that over the top. And I'm going to give it a stir to combine the ginger syrup. There's a little bit of ice in here. Sure. So I'm going to give it a good stir to combine the, the flavors. I say stir it about 60 times. You can do 45, you can do 50, but I like 60. Yeah. It's one of those things. You want to get a, to be chilled down, but not necessarily diluted. So, As we would say, there yeah. we are. A la minute. A la minute. Yeah. Yeah. So we put our little Hawthorne strainer over the top, and we're going to pour this into a glass. Now, this right now is the base. It doesn't have the, the essential ingredient, which is the seltzer water. So we're going to top this cocktail with a little bit of fresh seltzer water. And then I'm going to add these marvelous bitters from a company called Crude in North Carolina. In this case, it's a rosemary, grapefruit, and peppercorn bitters. Just a couple drops over the top. Great. So imagine if this was fully charged with THC, this would be a pretty considerable cocktail. And you might want to make this cocktail between two people. But since it doesn't have any THC in it, we can just enjoy it as such. That's a delicious drink. And there you go. That would be a dank and stormy, should it have the dank in it, which is the cannabis, which this drink does not have. But that's a delicious cocktail. And wow. imagine it in a Collins glass with a, with a bunch of ice or whatever. But I, I, I happen to like it this way because it really speaks clearly of the ingredients. Absolutely. Wow. It's very refreshing. It's great. That, that ginger beer syrup is fantastic. It's really fantastic it's, stuff. It's, and it's, it's spicy. It's, yeah. It's spicy. They put uh, cayenne pepper in it, so it has a real kick to it. But, you know, sure, I mean, we could put in a Collins glass, tons of ice, a little bit of fresh sure, lemon juice. Cool. It's what I have at my disposal. So. Oh, definitely a lot of character. Yeah, yeah, we could even add a little more rum. <laughs> there's, 
There's always more rum in my life. Never, never be too, uh, okay, cheers. Never be too stingy with mm. the rum. I'm a rum drinker That's myself, so I, this is fantastic. I think yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You know, cocktails are all about simplicity, and if you saw how many ingredients we use, we use rum, we use syrup, we use seltzer, and we use bitters. Simple, simple, simple. These aren't 10 minute preparations, they're not cocktails that take a whole lot of difficult, you know, prep, prep work to do. And then if you've done your infusion beforehand, it'll add a little bit of an herbaceous herbal note. Sure. Maybe it'll smell a little bit like the cannabis, who knows. It'll, it'll be a nice product. Yeah, no, I mean, the Dankin Stormy already, as a mocktail, has amazing character. It has amazing character. And then, of course, since I own the uh, the web address, DankinStormy.com. Is that right? I just got it yesterday. So uh, now I can truly say that I make Dankin Stormies. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers to thanks you. Thanks again, Warren. Wow, this is Warren Barbro. Thanks again for being on the show. Jonathan, it's my pleasure. Jonathan Echeverria, this has been New Mix Cocktails. I'll see you in the next episode. Like and subscribe. Thank you. And cheers. Best of luck.